A large part of my time, blood, sweat and occasionally tears is dedicated to helping fathers and at times non-resident mothers gain access to their children when faced with a resident parent who, in the absence of any court-recognised safeguarding issues, are all too often hell-bent on resisting contact and consumed with emotionally driven responses based on the path of hate, making them the ones who are emotionally abusing their own children. For me, it then beggars belief when I receive calls from fathers who have not seen their children often for long periods and tell me that they refuse to accept offered contact in a contact centre with expressions like, I have done nothing wrong. I'm not a criminal. Supporting clients through the broken family court system is often challenging enough without fathers wanting to now alienate themselves from their own children. I have some pretty robust views in relation to such dads, which I am going to share with you. But before I do, let's run my excellent introduction. I am Philip Kedge, director of the Mackenzie Friend UK Network and a retired police Chief Inspector. I have been a McKenzie Friend layperson for over a decade. In all my blogs, my views and opinions are entirely my own. If you would like to chat with me in person with respect to any aspect of your family court case, please just book a free consultation at www.contactphil.co.uk. So here is the problem. A dad hasn't seen their child for weeks or perhaps months. The other side offers a contact centre as a starting point which is supported by CAFCAS. However, the father says, no way, I'm not subjecting myself to that. I'm not a criminal. If I agree, I am admitting to being a bad parent who needs supervision. It looks as if I have done something wrong. I'm not admitting to any allegations. In reality, none of those fears are true. Contact centres are there as a holding position to ensure that the child has some time with the father whilst disputes are being resolved and any safeguarding issues explored. It's often the first vital step to the positive restoration and progression of contact for a parent. But even when you explain that to clients, they may still dig their heels in with their pride and egos dialed up to maximum whilst emotional intelligence is set at zero. The stark reality is that the father is now only thinking about themselves and has lost all focus on the child. The child has not seen their father who they absolutely love. The divorce is acrimonious, allegations are flying around, the child is watching the parents go to war, the child is scared, upset, hurting, confused, traumatised. They pretend they are not, the mother packs them off to school with demonising comments about their dad ringing in their ears, being, being told to be a brave little soldier. All that child wants, all that child needs, all that child is desperate for is to run into the arms of dad and to tell dad that they love him and to be told that they are loved back. But oh no, instead the father wants to fight the mother, wants to fight the system, wants to stand up for the non-existent father's rights. They are happy to be the martyr, to sacrifice their contact, to send their selfish, self-centred, egotistical message to the court of, I'm a good father, how dare you put me in a contact centre? 
Look at me. I'm taking a stand. So what are Kafkas and the courts actually thinking? Well, that's very easy to understand. They are turning directly to the child welfare checklist, which asks whether the father can meet the emotional, emotional needs of the child, to which the answer is clearly not. The father has absolutely no comprehension whatsoever of the child's emotional needs. He is currently devoid of the emotional intelligence it takes to see things from the child's perspective and to put the child first. So, only one thing will happen. Kafkas are now likely to start raising legitimate questions in relation to his parenting capacity. So, what would I do with a client who was behaving in this way? Well, I would encourage them to change their position. Even if it was the Pope and the unlikely event that the Pope had a child, I would advise them to get themselves into the contact centre as soon as possible. But what if they still didn't? Then my support and the client would most likely part company. I have to sleep at night and we simply wouldn't be on the same page. My heart would go out to the child. Let me now conclude. I looked up the Urban Dictionary for a description of the behaviour where a person acts in a self-centred manner whose concern is only for themselves, where everyone else doesn't count. The dictionary defined it as follows. A person who is acting like a dick. Now please don't shoot the messenger. Those are not my words. I am just sharing with you what the Urban Dictionary genuinely states. However, since this blog is directed at fathers because I have never come across a mother declining contact at a contact centre, that may be apt and provide some food for thought. Well, I hope you have found that informative and I am looking forward to the next blog. If you would like to talk to me in person about any aspect of your own case, please just book an appointment at www.contactphil.co.uk. See you again soon.